Good morning. Good morning. We begin today's worship with the collect of welcoming. Holy Spirit, living within us, send to St. Peter's all who are hurting or in need, all who are searching for you or for answers in their lives. Prepare us this day to receive them as Christ would. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcome in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, O oh God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all your children. In the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Now please kneel as Abel and join in the Decalogue. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with us, Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversity, which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth, 
with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words to Moses on Mount Sinai. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. <clears throat> you, shall do, you shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 19. We'll read it responsively by full verse. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day it tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is a great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above oh. all, keep your servant from oops. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? 
Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He poured also out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? but he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. May the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I want to thank Father Marshall, Reverend Liz, and our seminarian, Ava, for asking me to speak to you today. How do you feel about rules? Are you a rule follower, a rule breaker, a rule maker? Do you like to challenge rules? Odd questions and ones that you probably haven't ever been asked during a sermon. As I read the readings for today, the one word that keeps coming up for me is rules. Rules of God, rules given to Moses on the mountain after he brought the Hebrews out of Egypt. The first reading appointed for this morning is Exodus 20 verses 1 through 17, the Ten Commandments. We learn them as young children in Sunday school They are found in the Catechism of the Book of Common Prayer, starting on page 847, in case we need a reminder. As the Book of Common Prayer states, the Ten Commandments' purpose is to give us a way to define our relationship with God and our neighbors. It goes on to show that Commandments 1 through 4 shape our responsibility to God, and as we follow those commandments, we show we trust in God. Then the fifth through 10th commandments are how we are towards our neighbors or fellow humans. Pretty basic, right? Downright simple even. So how is it that we often fall short and don't obey them, either in their entirety or only partially not obey them? Remember those questions I asked? Well, I'm a rule follower. I remember as a young girl in school, we had rules rules for behavior in class, 
rules for walking the halls, rules for lunchtime, test taking, raising your hand in class. At home, as the seventh child of a family with eight children, we had rules, lots of rules. <laughs> rules around bedtime, rules at the dinner table, rules for keeping the house clean, rules for the use of the one bathroom with 10 people living in the house. Living in a civilized society, there are rules to make sure people are safe and that we can live with order. A simple Google search, uh, simple psychology defines societal rules as greeting people when you see them, saying thank you for favors, holding the door open for others, standing up when someone else enters the room, offering to help someone carrying something heavy, speaking quietly in public places, waiting in line politely. On their face, we can think these are easy. These are simple rules to follow. And yet, we struggle at times to ourselves to remember them, to keep them. Why is it? What is it about the simple rules that we struggle with that make it hard? I remember feeling proud that I followed the rules. I wanted to make people around me proud of me and my rule following. I was often the one who made sure others followed rules or pointed out when rules weren't being followed. Then, the, when the occasion would happen where I was the rule breaker, I remember feeling sick, not right about it, trying to hide it from those that would punish me for my mistakes or choices. I even remember going to confession one time because I stole from the bingo candy box. You see, my mom and her friend were members of the ladies' society at church, and she and her friend used to set up the bingo at the church, and she would bring me and my sister and friend with her. We had jobs to do, and one of them was to open up and set up the candy boxes that held the candy bars at bingo that night. Well, I'm sure you guessed already where I'm going with this. I was about eight or nine years old, and I stole a candy bar. And my mom caught me in the car with it and on the way home. I was raised in the Roman Catholic Church, so I was sent to confession before Sunday Mass next, that week. I showed up for confession and went into the booth and started the usual, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been a month since my last confession. I then told my transgression to the priest, and guess what he told me? Oh, I don't think you sinned. But we talked, and he told me that perhaps had I just asked, my mother would have given me the candy. He didn't know my mother. <laughs> But what I was worried about was my mother going to forgive me. That was important to me. And yes, she did forgive me, but she knew that holding me accountable, or better yet, having me take accountability for my actions was important. Anyway, the priest did give me penance, and it was that I was to say three Hail Marys and two Our Fathers. I left the confessional and promptly sat in the pews and said my prayers. I remember over the years going through that same routine and confessing my sins and saying my penance. I've always come out feeling better and tried not to repeat the offenses. It set a good habit for me, setting aside time to reflect on my actions and to review what it was I was doing in my life and making an accounting to do better. As I grew up, I still had lessons to learn, rules to break, I did both. My mom did forgive me, and we moved forward in communion with each other each time. However, it wasn't until I grew deeper in my faith and understanding of my relationship with God that I experienced true repentance. Being humans, having free will to make our own choices, we often make poor choices and fall short. We are influenced by emotions and other external factors. We fail to be kind or say thank you, and we make excuses. We had a bad day, or someone else was mean to us, so we have to be mean back. An eye for an eye, you could say. There are temptations. For example, peer pressure. Oh, come on, no one will know. Mom won't find out. The teacher won't see. It'll be fun. We succumb to the pressure. We fall short of the mark. When we break the rule or sin or break a commandment and don't get caught, it may be easier to do it again and again and again. 
As we continue on the path of being a rule breaker, we begin to feel guilt and shame because we have disappointed those that love us, those we love and want to please. When we disappoint our parents and they are hard on us, they punish us and give us consequences for our choices. And at times, we find we are a disappointment even to ourselves. We are broken and dismayed. We can be caught in despair thinking we have no recourse, no way out, no way to fix this. When we sin and break God's rules, that is a new level of disappointment. We disappoint God. We break the rules. We fail to love him with our whole heart. We fail to love our neighbors as ourselves. We then separate ourselves from the heavenly grace and the love we seek and desire in our hearts. But we are so blessed. As Christians, we believe in a loving and forgiving God. Our belief sustains us and holds us up, even in our despair. During the Lenten season, we prepare for the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. We offer repentance, fasting, and self-sacrifice. We spend this time reflecting, praying, and fasting, all to prepare ourselves to be worthy of the great prize, the blessing of the risen Christ. Oh, how amazingly fortunate we are. We suffer and prepare during Lent. We know that Christ is risen. We know that he came to save us from ourselves and to suffer once for all for our sins and transgressions. The disciples, Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Judas Iscariot, Matthew, Thomas, James, Bartholomew, Thaddeus, and Simon were not so fortunate. They did not know for sure. They only knew and believed what Jesus had told them. They did not have the wisdom of Jesus to know and truly believe. We know the wonderful gift of everlasting life. We have faith believing in the gift of the resurrection. So when we break the rules, and we find ourselves in need of forgiveness, we only have to ask for it. Our God is a loving God, a forgiving God. Often I struggle knowing this and wondering, how am I, me, this sinful person, worthy of God's forgiveness? Who am I to think my wrongs are not so egregious that they can be forgiven? How egotistical am I to think I am worthy of forgiveness? I find myself asking this question often. Then. I'm reminded again that I am a child of the most loving and forgiving God, a God whose property it is always to have mercy. When we offer our penitence at weekly services, we are presented with the opportunity to join in community to offer the confession of sin and seek God's forgiveness. As we share in this declaration of our penitence and as we are offered forgiveness, we are washed clean and given newness of life. We are in communion with our parish and fellow fellowship of Christians, and we collectively support one another in that fellowship. We know that we all fall short of the glory of God, and we all share in the forgiveness of our sins by that same God. As we are cleansed and created new, we are restored to the glory of God. We are released of shame and guilt. We move forward to be in communion with our Lord, ourselves, our neighbors, and our loved ones. We are rule followers again, wrapped in the love of God, looking toward the heavenly hills. Psalm 51, verse 1, have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. As I am forgiven by the grace of God, there is a peace that passes all understanding that I carry with me throughout my day, sure in the knowledge of everlasting life and armed with the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as able and affirm our faith with the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made then. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one in baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come before you in our own brokenness, in need of your grace and favor. We trust in the promise you have made to hear our prayers in the name of your son, Jesus. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Christine and Charlie. We remember those serving in the military, especially Nicole, Matthew, Matthew, Daniel, Shelby, and Brian. We pray for wisdom, courage, and strength for all your followers, especially those in leadership of your church. We remember Michael, our presiding bishop, Sally, our bishop, Marshall, our rector, Elizabeth, our associate, and Eva, our seminarian. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the church of the province of Uganda. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the ministry of the communication staff. Set their hearts on you alone. We pray for the leaders of the nations that they protect and provide for their people and work for peace and justice. We pray for those who struggle with disappointments, with financial insecurities, with grief over lost loved ones or lost dreams. We pray for relief of pain for those whose bodies and hearts ache. We pray for all on our parish prayer list, especially Rick, Chris, and Christine, Felicia, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Robert, Misty, Stacy, Moira, Alex, Dylan, Kay, Michael, Doug and Christy, Larry, Roger, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Kay, Sonny, Betty, Pat, Piper, Ayla, William, Phil, Gail, Peter, Ethel, Aiden, Eddie and Nancy, Cindy, Christopher, Philippe, Diane, Florence, Oscar, Joseph, Patrick, Ernie, Keith, John, Janet, Paul, Doreen, Judy, Donna, Jason, Braden, Christopher, Pam, William, Lynn, Jeffrey, Catherine, and John. We ask for healing for all who suffer. We pray for those who have died and now rest in your eternal embrace. Comfort the loved ones who mourn their loss. All this we ask, O Lord, in Jesus' name, the one who lived and moved among us in our broken world and who loves us still. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, 
not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Morning. morning. Katie, thank you. Well done. My, uh, my seminary theology professor, Jim Carpenter, would be very impressed. That was a really strong one. So let's hear it for your systematics. Um, just a note about what's happening in the coming week. I continue my Doctor of Ministry uh, work. I'll be doing an intensive uh, at Madison, at Drew. So I'll be out of the office for the balance of the week. If there are any pastoral calls, though, please just give my cell phone a ring. Um, it's a relatively flexible schedule and that if there's an emergency, I'll be able to pick up an answer. So very much appreciate that. Reverend Liz will be away Monday through Wednesday. She and Marcel have uh, a trip to make and will be back uh, for us next week. We look forward to that. And then this coming weekend is diocesan convention. So please pray for myself, for Rosita, for Craig Kafafi, and for Jean Dabrowski. We'll be making our way down to Trenton for number two of three diocesan conventions within this calendar year as we do a canonical reset uh, with our new bishop to move the convention to the fall. We have some very specific things we have to do per canon, per the rule of, of uh, order in our diocese so that we can do these switches, um, but uh, we're looking forward to that. And next year, only having one convention to do, so that'll be nice. Um, please be aware that there are a bunch of sign-up sheets in the back as we move towards the end of Lent. Back there, particularly, I'll point out, is the night watch. That is from Maundy Thursday after we finish stripping the altar here in the church. We keep watch over the reserved sacrament until the morning liturgy at 8 a.m. for Good Friday. So if you'd like to sign up for that and take an hour and watch with Christ, um, we appreciate that support. It's a great opportunity to sort of take a quiet moment in prayer. I know there's always a real arm wrestling fight over who gets the 2 a.m. slot, but uh, we can do multiple people signing up. So you can actually have a prayer partner in that regard. So maybe you wanna sign up together for that, but please do a, keep yourself as available of that. Also, please be mindful that the Holy Week schedule is now up on the website, and uh, soon you will also see the sandwich board go out up front that'll give people a note on when the services are for Holy Week. Liz, do you want to say anything yes. about that? Yes, um, and in addition, there is a sign up in the back for Monday Thursday Supper Church, which we're going to do again in the, in the hall. We just want to get a sense of how many folks will be coming, dietary restrictions, and then We'll be looking for a few people to um, make a pot of soup. So just let me know or make a note there if you're planning to come or and if you'd be willing to bring a pot of soup. Um, and then also, there are so many different things going on in Lent. Um, we have our um, Lenten retreat Saturday the 23rd, 9 o'clock, here in the sanctuary. Mother Allison will be joining us and we'll be um, continuing our reflection on the return of the prodigal son. So um, there's also a sign up for that in the back. Um, and then finally, um, kind of working backwards, um, next Saturday is women's breakfast. While um, some folks are at convention, I will be hanging back for women's breakfast and grief group. Women's breakfast is gonna be at Colonial. Thank you to Bev for organizing us. Um, and then we'll meet here in the sanctuary at 1030 for grief group. The additional sign-up sheet in the back is for coffee hour. Uh, Damaris is bringing us some delicious treats today, so please come join us after the service. And uh, feel free to sign up to take a spot and uh, come and socialize, even if you um, aren't able to sign up. The other thing, I know there are so many announcements, I just want to remind you that there had been a conversation about a Bible read-along in Eastertide, so don't worry about it yet, but just remember uh, that we will be um, taking some time to read through the uh, Gospel of Luke and the book of the Acts of the Apostles um, and talking about the, the story that they're telling together. So look forward to that, but nothing to put on your calendar just yet. Yeah, there's no sign-up sheet for that yet. There will be, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just a note, because I'll be traveling, I will post 
uh, recorded daily office, but there will not be a live daily office. So, you, you know, if you're looking for that at nine o'clock, it'll be online, but it'll be because it's been recorded earlier. So you'll be able to see that, or at five o'clock, same thing. So those will post, you'll be able to pray along, but it'll be um, a recorded YouTube. As well, um, please be aware that Luann has new ShopRite cards, and uh, those, uh, there's a whole new stock of those. So if you want to support Alice's Cup and Kelly's Cupboard and our feeding ministries, as you work towards your f -f 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 free turkey or ham, um, you can do that through ShopRite and through our cards. So you can support the church three times over. You can spend the money on the card. We get a support for that. You can also uh, buy things and leave them in the ShopRite uh, bin here, at, here in Spotswood or bring them here to church for the food pantries. And then of course, once you get that free ham or turkey, we appreciate that donation. That makes a big difference moving down the line. And uh, not to mention the fact that the ham bones also go to good use and get turned into soup as well. So it's just a, all the way down the line, that's great. Next month, um, there's been a shift in the lunch bunch. I'll keep you posted on that. But they're gonna be baking. Um, so we look forward, this coming month, sorry, we're in March now. This coming month, uh, we'll give you a note on that. And they're gonna be baking instead of just making bag lunches. So we're very excited about that. Those of you who enjoy the forward day by days, they're here at the back and at the front. Please do avail yourself of those. And of course, join us for some fellowship over there. They are just in the midst of doing the big switchover. So a lot of the seating in the fellowship space is taken up by racks and racks and racks of stuff that are about to be rolled out on Monday um, for the shop being switched over to spring. But you can grab a cup of coffee, stand for a bit, take some fellowship. And of course, maybe if you wanna do a little bit of early shopping, I'm sure Jeannie would be happy to take your money. Um, so in that regard, we're very excited about all the hard work that's gone into this seasonal switchover. You guys get a chance to glimpse just how much Bev and the downstairs crew do to get us ready for what's about to happen upstairs. So very excited about that. Last and uh, sadly, um, John Cox, Judy Cox's husband, passed away last week. And uh, after a long, time, long period of health challenges, his uh, visitation and funeral will be at Brunswick Memorial from 2 to 4. Around 3.30 or so, I'll be leading prayers in memory of him. But please keep uh, Judy, Scott, Olivia, and the whole crew uh, up, up, on, um, up, on, up on Irving in your prayers. Uh, he was a great friend of the parish. Didn't see him often. Saw him on Wednesdays sometimes, but uh, truly one of the great uh, members of our community, and we'll be missing him sorely. Any other announcements? Yes. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. So yes, yeah, so um, for anyone who's out there uh, and didn't quite catch that uh, over the microphone, um, Nancy McTaggart participates in Souls for Souls. These shoes are collected beginning in August, but of course, as Nancy just said, she never refuses a pair. Um, so, and any size will do, right? That's the... And that's uh, men's, women's, children's... Everything. Any kind of shoe you've got, they'll take. So, nice little slip on, heel, you name it. We got you. You know, I need to get rid of mine, so I'll donate. That's good. Thank you all. It's appreciative of having all here. Everyone is welcome, and we're glad to be able to welcome you home to St. Peter's. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, meet, and right, so It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil, and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord and God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy memory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself, once offered a full and perfect and sufficient sacrifice of oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the wor whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. La noche en que lo traíse en Nerón, Jesús tomó pan, y después de darte gracias lo partió y lo compartió con sus discípulos, Y dijo, tomen y coman. Esto es mi cuerpo que se entrega por ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria mía. Asimismo modo, después de cenar, tomo el caliz divino, te dio gracias, se lo entrega y dijo, Beban todos, esto es mi sangre de la nueva, nueva alianza, que por ustedes y por todos se derrama para el perdón de los pecados. Cada vez que lo beban, hagan esto en memoria mía. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these, thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. Por tanto, te pedimos con toda humildad, O Padre misericordioso, que nos escuches y que por tu gran bondad bendigas y sanctifiques con tu palabra y santo espíritu esto tu dones y criaturas de pan y vino, y concede que recibiéndolos como tu hijo estableció 
y recordando su pasión y muerte, compartamos de su cuerpo y sangre. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept that this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may re obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that we may dwell in him, or that he may dwell in us, and we in him. Y aunque somos indignos de ofrecer sacrificio por nuestros muchos pecados, cometidos, te rogamos que aceptes este nuestro deber y servicio obligado, non no con juicio, sino tu perdón, por, Jesu, por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, O honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, in the language of our hearts, as Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Now please join me in the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
before our post-communion prayer, just want to offer a reminder that next Sunday is Lent Terry Sunday, which is the pink Sunday in Lent. So if you want to wear pink to church, this is one of your two Sundays a year to wear it proudly. Or you can wear it every Sunday. Or, um, and then in Sunday school next Sunday, we'll also be making the Lazarakia bread, which is the Lazarus rolls. Last year we made them, and then and they grew like that big. <laughs> um, and then I think they were they were given out to um, the feeding program, which is amazing. Uh, they were probably like, "What are these things?" But um, so we'll be making those. So if you want to join us for that too, let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, that we are very members in corporate mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Any birthdays or anniversaries? No? Well, if it's your birthday out there, we wish you many blessings. Mira misericordiosamente a esta tu familia, Dios todo poderoso, que por tu gran bondad pueda ser gobernada y preservada eternamente por Cristo nuestro Señor. Amen. Look mercifully on this, your family, Almighty God that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to
because that happened. Yeah. Right. She's kind of all her weeks well, long. Well, she likes eight. She likes eight o'clock. But it's not shake oh, it for and then she always. Um, but she's got. You know what? Yesterday was pie. Wow. It was pie. Well, that was the lunch you put in. Pie's for. Oh. Oh. I like. You play always like ten or something. This looks like a whole yeah. twenty-five or something. No. I think it's too much. Well, we'll just. Well, it's all. He didn't even do anything with it. He put it up there. Yeah. We were so small. Yeah. Yeah. That is nice. It's right. Should this be staying right here? For yeah, you? because it's if they wrote any uh, notes or anything. Right if it's on there, right there. Yes. you could also just leave that note on there. No, I'm not used to this one because you guys had me so spoiled. Oh, right, because. Because you always, I get here at you know nine thirty. 